Hey everybody, this is TJR. This is Superfan. We're hanging out with the little guy who's got his own little vlogging setup and is ready to go. And we're gonna talk about a film, a Walt Disney film, Song of the South. Um, you've been a big Disney fan probably all your life. Yeah, and I would say so. And I've always said I like Disney as much as the next guy. But I think being around you, I've learned a lot more about Walt Disney, the history of Disney, uh, to where I appreciate it a lot more than say I would have had you and I not met. I, I would say I would say you probably increased my appreciation, especially for Walt Disney uh, as an individual. Um, but Song of the South is a film uh, released in the 1940s that is currently here in the United States, anyways, not available on DVD, not available on Blu-ray not available on the Disney Plus streaming service, which we have a subscription to. Um, it was released briefly. On VHS? On, no, not on VHS, on Laserdisc. Laserdisc, yeah, not on VHS, but on Laserdisc. And you've probably, if you're watching this video, you probably know a little bit about the film. Um, we have never seen the film, but from what we've read about it, it is, Considered controversial for its for the for the depiction of the time period that it's portraying. Yes. Now, the film, from what I've read, is actually set during the Reconstruction era of the South after slavery was abolished. But also, apparently, the film doesn't really make any strong point to point that out. I've heard that there are many people who say you can watch this film and think it's taking place during slavery in the South, and that. Either way, it portrays the experience of black Americans during this time as this sort of idyllic thing that everybody just got along and that it really wasn't all that bad. Um, just because just slavery- like now. Yeah, just like now, which she says facetiously. You know, that's one of the major issues with the film from what I understand. It is a live action animation hybrid. I've always had an interest in seeing it because of the animation. It was released when I was a kid, and I really wanted to go see it, but my parents wouldn't uh -huh. let me go. Was it because of the controversial yeah. nature of it? Okay. The film, for that reason, the Walt Disney Company will not release it. They may be right to do this, they may be wrong, but what's weird about it is that while they won't release the film, they have until recently, very recently, had a theme park... Attraction. A theme yeah. park attraction, excuse me, that basically is themed off of it. And that was Splash Mountain here in California at Disneyland and at Walt Disney uh, World in Florida. And at the time of making this video, they recently closed Florida's Splash Mountain. Yeah, and they'll be soon closing the California one here too. They're going to re-theme it to the Frog Princess, Princess right? Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog, excuse me. This, of course, gets a lot of people angry People are saying, oh, they're being woke. I just think it's has been weird that all this time they won't release this film, yet they have a theme park attraction that's themed after it. And the 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 primary song off the film, Zippity Doo Dah, is a large part of their soundtrack at the theme parks. It's a it, it's a constant at their theme parks, yet it's part of this film. Yeah, it's from this film. It's it's um won an Academy Award. It's a great song. It is. I know the song very well because I've, I've been hearing it since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, we had records when I was, Disney records when I was a kid and that was part of it. Didn't even know what it was from, but it's, uh, it's a song that you will hear if you go to the Disney theme parks. So the film has had a lot of controversy. Uh, some have said that it shouldn't be released at all. It should never be released. Um, Disney has tried to sweep it under the rug, pretend like it doesn't exist. Yet it has its advocates. Actress Whoopi Goldberg has been a big advocate for releasing the film. As she has said, to not release it is to pretend like this history didn't exist. She feels that Disney is denying their own history, that they should release it, um, that it should be used as a means of opening up a conversation. So recently, you, Superfan, yes. had a great idea about what Disney should do. Because I think the more they ignore it, the bigger of a problem it becomes for them, this kind of glaring, that you know, this glaring thing that they're hiding. And what made you think of the idea was that I'm, um, I'm a big fan of the Criterion channel, a Criterion movie collection. 
I own a number of Criterion films. Now, if you don't know who Criterion is, uh, Criterion initially was a, a company that re-releases both newer and older films, both, um, both domestic and foreign. When they re-release older films, they will restore them, clean them up. They will add tons of bonus features of their own. If there had been previous releases with, with, with bonus features uh, from previous releases, they'll try to add those in as well. They will do these really great presentations of films from the entire history of cinema, from, from silent films to modern day films and from movies across the world. It is very much uh, a service for serious film aficionados, film buffs. I think they do a great job with what they do. And, I, and I've always said that I've never seen a Criterion release that it wasn't at least interesting, if nothing else. And of course, now we subscribe to the Criterion, they call it the Criterion channel, but it's their streaming service. I wanted to subscribe to it because I wanted to start experiencing different types of cinema. So recently, I, w I got the, the most recent Criterion newsletter in my email, and I saw that, hey, that Criterion is gonna do their very first ever collaboration with Walt Disney Studios, and they're gonna do a Criterion collection release of the movie WALL-E. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And I immediately told you about it because you're such a big Disney fan. Yeah. And you thought it was cool too. You were, your response was, I can't wait to see it because you, you've experienced Criterion releases with me and you've seen what they do with films. Yeah. Um, not just the, the preservation and the cleanups, the restorations they do, which Wally probably doesn't need because it's a modern film. But they do amazing work with older silent films, like the Charlie Chaplin films we've seen, where they looked like they were filmed yesterday. They look that they look that pristine. Um, but just what they were going to do with bonus features, their own their own Criterion original uh, uh, features on it as well, and then it hit you. Well, we had been watching. Um, they did a, a series of Asian films. That's right. They and had a playlist on the on the service, the streaming service, about Asian, about Chinese representation in cinema. It was curated by a Chinese American filmmaker, and that's when it occurred to you as we were looking through this playlist of films. You said that's what Disney needs to do about Song of the South. That Criterion should release Song of the South. And the more I thought about it after you said it, the more I realized you're right. Because first of all, Disney releasing the film has, just comes with a load of problems. Because if it's a Disney release, it's also considered a family release. Criterion is not, in, while, they, is not while they may release films that were made for children, it is more, it is not a service for children, it is a service for adult film aficionados. Film aficionados. And if they're gonna release Song of the South, they are gonna release it with all the right disclaimers, documentary bonus features. The right commentary. The right the commentaries, right people, exactly. Opening the door to have a conversation. For discussion, which is exactly what Whoopi, why Whoopi Goldberg says the film should be released, that they should not be denying their history. By doing this, Disney now releases a lot of that burden, takes a lot of that burden off of their hands, and they can say, yes, we're not denying our history anymore. We've officially licensed this through the Criterion Collection. We feel they will do the best job of releasing this film in a responsible way. And there have been comments by Disney staffers, including Bob Iger, when asked, will this ever get released? Where they have said, We're, we have no plans to release it at the present, but that doesn't mean we won't in the future. If we do release it, we want to release it in the right way. And that means they want to be careful about how they release it, which I don't blame them. Um, because in a way, they're kind of in this place where they can't, where they almost can't win either way. They clearly can't win by not releasing it. They're accused of denying their own history and trying to sweep it under the rug. If they do release it though, they open up a whole bucket of worms for them as well. But if they let Criterion release it, I think that's doing it in the right way. It takes a lot of the burden off of their shoulders and Criterion, it's not part of their history. Criterion has it's been- It's an unbiased entity. 
That's right. It's an unbiased entity releasing it. And Criterion has had a history of showcasing forgotten films, lost films, lost to history by black filmmakers during the 1930s, during the 1940s, that for the most part, if not for them, would have been forgotten to time. Made for black audiences only, to be shown only in black theaters. And, you know, because it was such a segregated world. They have a history for doing that. So, so releasing this film, I think, falls well within what they do and how well they do it. It's, 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 it's a piece of history. It's a piece of Disney history, but it's not a history that they have to be burdened with. Well, I think that Criterion is going to recognize the Disney history and the respect that the Disney company deserves mm -hmm. along with addressing the issues that come from a film like this made in the time that it was made yeah. when the world was a different place. Yeah, and they have no problem with showing these types of films uncensored. We recently, they had a playlist recently 100 Years of Judy Garland. When we first, in fact, when we first signed up for the service that month, they had a playlist, a uh, special curated playlist, 100 Years of Judy Garland. One of the films we saw um, had this sequence at the end where all the cast suddenly came out in blackface and did a musical number. They had a, a warning before the film started that you're going to see this in this film. So if this upsets you, don't watch, you know. And when we watched it, I remember we were both kind of cringing when we watched it. But we understood we're adults. You know, we understood this was a different time. We thought it was a good movie in spite of that scene. Uh, but it, we definitely were cringing when we saw it. Yeah. And Criterion is good at taking these types of films and putting them into perspective because you're right. It's they're not a studio. They don't make films. They just re-release films and package them. Uh, to a specific niche market of film aficionados and film buffs, serious ones, who really have a huge interest in movie history. I, yeah, when you said it, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, that's perfect. That's what Disney should do. And I have a feeling that that is kind of the plan, too. I hope it is the plan. I mean, we have nothing to go by on that. I, I, I didn't wouldn't have thought about it till you said it, really. But would you have ever expected Disney to let Criterion do Wally. No, I never would have expected it. I never would expect that they would ever let any other studio touch their films. Exactly. Yeah. I think that this is the tr the test run mm -hmm. to see how it goes, mm -hmm. to see how people respond to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's opening that door. Yeah, I, 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 you, have, you make a very good point of that. And it very well could be. We have, not, we have nothing to substantiate that, but yeah. That's I, so my instinct. That's kind of why I wanted to make this video. Not because I want to see the film, but I think it's an answer to the problem of what they should do about it. Because I think the more they ignore that this film exists, the more they don't talk about it, the worse it gets for them. The more they are accused of denying their own history, their own anything problematic with their own history. And so I think this is the way to do it. And again, we've never seen this film. We only know the controversy that surrounds it. Uh, you know, the film was was protested against. Even back in the 40s when it came, was first released, it was protested against by the NAACP. But again, we've never seen it. So with that said, um, I, we just wanted to, I wanted to make this video and just put that thought out there on the internet and hopefully maybe if, if it wasn't something that the Disney studios have thought about, and this is really pretentious of me, I guess, to even say this, but I really just, I thought nobody, I've heard nobody say this or talk about this or bring this up on the internet. So I thought, okay, I'll put a video. I want, I, I said to you, Superfan, I want to put a video out where we talk about your idea, which I think is great. Um, just put it out there. Hopefully maybe somebody out there hears about it and word gets to if they have, if Disney has not thought about this, hopefully it gets them. I hope we. I don't. I hope I don't come up for pretentious saying this, but I think it's a great idea, and I think it solves the problem of what to do about the Song of the South. So, with that said, now uh, I want to say this is this video here is part one of two videos we're going to make, because after 
Superfan had this great idea. It put kind of the, the bug in my head that we should watch this film. But of course, you can't really get it anywhere except as a bootleg. And so I was doing a little bit of online shopping and found that I could get a copy of it on Blu-ray uh, from Spain. And hopefully we will come back with a second video here and we'll react to this film, Song of the South. And like I said before, this is from Spain. Apparently, this is about as good looking of a copy of the film you're going to get as far as quality. And uh, we're going to come back with another video and talk about the film. Anyways, though, let us know your thoughts about this. What do you think of this idea? And um, if you think it's a good idea, hopefully you'll uh, click like on this video so that hopefully more people will see it. Pass it along to anyone you think might be interested that's ever talked about this film. At this point now, as always on every video, I want to say thank you to the patron supporters. You are fierce and mighty. We appreciate what you do. Patron supporters receive exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. But mostly thank you for just hanging out and watching. Interested in reading your comments about this? Uh, this film has been a subject of much controversy and I'll be curious to hear what you have to say. Um, as always, uh, we welcome all opinions, but keep, keep your... Keep the tone of your language uh, respectful. respectful. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it all respectful. Everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.